Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman, your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com, and I'm here again today in the ProSec playground where I have all sorts of blocks that we get to test, and it's such a unique circumstance because since sometimes when we know what's in there, it helps us illustrate what you might identify in the field or struggle with. So I'm here today with Isaac, who is the head of product management at ProSec. He's gonna describe the block a little bit uh, uh, for you, and then we're gonna do two scans. One on top, which is gonna show the rebar and how the rebar, the energy off of the rebar is gonna limit our ability to see the back wall of it. And then where there is no rebar, we'll have a much clearer picture. So people often tell me that they struggle to see the back wall and they wonder why. Um, this is one of those reasons. So go ahead, Isaac, why don't you describe sure. the- uh, Yes, hi. The hi everyone. So this is a pretty challenging test block for concrete GPR testing because it is quite thick here. So we have 40 centimeters here of thickness. We have a double rebar mesh with quite quite thick rebar, only up uh, up down to the to the half of it. And the most important feature, maybe you can see it on the camera, is back here we have a vertex, and the vertex lies at 55 centimeters depth. That is a challenging task to detect that back wall, especially that vertex for all GPRs, except ours for sure. Okay, here you can see also, however, what the impact is of that rebar mesh on the ability of a GPR in that case, process GPR Live, of detecting that uh, shape of the back wall, the diagonal back wall. And you will definitely see a, a difference between that part of the block and that part of the block. So, all right, so go ahead and start the scan. Um, I'm gonna wake this thing up. It's telling me it's powering up. And once it finishes, all right, it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start my scan. I'm gonna start with the bottom here to show uh, what it looks like. And so obviously you can see the back wall in this case. Should kind of expand it out a little bit. Um, and that's it right there. So we're hitting the back wall. It's really clear. There's no rebar on top. And that wave does not attenuate um, the signal much. You know, it doesn't get attenuated as it's going through because there is no real reflections there. Now, alternatively, when I go to the top over here and we start hitting rebar, you can see that the amplitudes of the response off the back wall when trying to go through rebar is significantly lower compared to this side, the bottom of the slab, where there were no rebar. So we talk a lot about, uh, um, it's even more apparent, by the way, in, in, in the migrated view. Um, so here, this is the uh, um, bottom of the slab, clear back wall, right? No signal uh, um, uh, kind of impediment from, from the rebar, where on this side, you can hardly see. You can kind of see the V-shape a little bit, but it's not nearly as crisp and clear as uh, uh, where there is no rebar. So this is something that's important because we talk a lot about conductivity as being a struggle for GPR. So when soil or materials is conductive, it'll eat away at the electrical field of the EM wave signal. But people have to take into account reflection events as well. And so every time the wave reflects off of some sort of contrast, it eats away at your signal. And so going through the rebar on top makes it a difficult thing to see the back wall but going through no rebar on the bottom, the clarity was exceptional. So just kind of take that into note. There's multiple things that can attenuate your signal. Conductivity is one. Scatter from small inconsistencies is another. But reflections will attenuate your signal. If you have layers, a lot of times those lower layers will seem as a, a smaller response because the signal has reflected so many times before it even got to that low layer. So I hope this was useful to you. Thank you so much, Isaac. I appreciate it. Um, it's been fun being here in the playground. And uh, if you haven't done so yet and you found this was useful, then subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you share it around with somebody who you think might be able to benefit from this video. And go to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, and we will send you videos like this every single week. Good luck.